which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. should be presented prior to being read. Um, if you come to the podium, make sure the mic's on. You'll see a little red light at the top. Sign in, state your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes to discuss your item. Uh, for those that may not have been here before, if you haven't signed in in the back of the room, please do so. Under agenda edits, uh, we're eliminating item 9D, the food service management company response to the RFP. And there will be a brief executive session in the library behind us after the meeting to discuss a uh, negotiation issue and a personnel issue. With that, Mrs. Torsh. Do you want to go first with the law enforcement? Mr. Just wanted to add to the agenda, um, Gary Road. This is issue is feeding on Gary Road. The Union Township wants us to bring up. I just want to add that to the end of the agenda. Item D. Uh, Under new business, item 16D, we've re been receiving complaints about Gary Road. Uh, students speeding as they leave the high school, so I'll add that to the agenda for discussion purposes. Yeah, I think we should. We took the Absolutely. I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, in honor of, of the local law enforcement, uh, the state police rep has not arrived yet. I'm hoping they still make it. Birdsboro won't be able to. And we have two members, including the chief of the Amity Township Police Department. We decided as a board and administration about two months ago to uh, pass a resolution in honor of local law enforcement and recognition of them. And this is National Police Recognition Week, so we held off on doing this until now. So let me read this, and it was crafted by Mr. Curtis. The resolution of the Daniel Boone Area Board of School Directors in recognition, thanks, and support of local law enforcement. Whereas the Daniel Boone Area Board of School Directors is the governing body of the Daniel Boone Area School District, comprised of the municipalities of Amity Township, the borough of Birdsboro, and Union Township. Whereas the Amity Township Police Department, the Birdsboro Police Department, and the Pennsylvania State Police serve the Daniel Boone Area School District, our students, staff, and community with professionalism, honor, and distinction. Whereas law enforcement officers routinely and regularly place themselves into harm's way to protect and defend our communities. Whereas the Daniel Boone Area Board of School Directors recognizes the necessity of rule of law and the essential role that local law enforcement plays in the functioning of a just society. Be it resolved that the Daniel Boone Area Board of School Director hereby expresses its thanks an appreciation to the Amity Township Police Department, the Birdsboro Police Department, and the Pennsylvania State Police for their courageous service protecting our students, staff, and community. And this was agreed to on the 26th of January, 2015, by the entire board. So we thank you, we commend you. Uh, the, the negative publicity we see on TV, I'm appalled by. I, we think you do one heck of a job, and, and we appreciate it. So, thank you.
don't love me, I'm the chief of the township. Uh, I'll be retired in my second job in about eight months. But I've been here six years. I have a really, I do have a really great group of police officers. And I know, I know you say troopers are excellent. Troopers everywhere are excellent. No matter what state you're in. Uh, first for all, students are our constant backup here in Ashton Township. Very frequently, without them, our officers might be responding alone on some calls when we get busy. Uh, Exeter also is our asset for us. But I appreciate this. I thank you all on behalf of all my officers. It's been a pleasure to serve this community. I've been very honored for this chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martino. We do have a few things to celebrate this evening, and at this time I would ask um, Mrs. Rexroad to please come up to the podium. Um, she is going to share with the board and the audience um, something that transpired at the middle school. It's called Michaela's Voice and the Wheels of Friendship, and the way that our um, non-disabled peer group work directly with our disabled peers in creating this Wheels of Friendship. And um, it's, it's quite something to see. So we just have a very brief video to show you how, if you look over here to the left, how all the way over, how the uh, friendship wheel was developed. So you need to turn that on. Um, at the middle school, we have a program that um, is called Connections, and one of the things that they do is they work um, together with our life skills students, and one of the things that um, we were fortunate to be involved in this year was to work with Michaela's Voice, which is an organization that um, works directly with um, inclusion, and they really, they really champion inclusion in, in school districts. So, um, with the help of Nikki Haybecker, she um, has a son named Josh, and he is in a wheelchair. And one of the things behind Michaela's voice is um, celebrating um, inclusion while using a wheelchair in art, and it's called Wheels of Friendship. So. We created the painting that's over there. I'll talk about that in a second. But this video is actually up on the Michaela's Voice website. And we uh, filmed this about a month ago. the speaker have a dial on it. Down here on the middle ah. yeah, see if that'll work. I can't tell which one is the bottom of it's not watch it be like the library. Do you know if left is up or down? That's what I was thinking. It seemed to already be up there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. 
get started there. Well done. Might as well start over one more time so you can hear the whole thing. <laughs> Friendship is caring for another person, always caring about them, checking up on them, seeing how they're doing, loving, patient, strong, accepting, excited about working together and learning from each other. A good friend is trustworthy, somebody who's always going to be there for you. First and foremost, a person needs compassion. We need to make it part of our everyday lives. We're all different. Everybody has that one special thing about once you find a way to connect with somebody, you find they're just like you. The Wheels of Friendship. Wheels of Friendship is a program created by McCabe's <coughs> Voice to show how you can include everyone in the arts. Kids that have disabilities and kids that don't work together to create something beautiful for our school. Middle school is an important time in a child's life. Not only are they changing, they're also learning who they are as people. Fire is really good at lots of things, you know. She's good at bringing people up and she always makes everyone really smile. I learned a lot from him on the outside. He's quiet, but once he really gets to know he's really up there. I see him almost every morning talking with his friends, and that's really a great thing to see. The difference he makes within our students is powerful. Inclusion makes education. It benefits all kids, not just those with complex needs. It creates an environment that is welcoming and warm and friendly, and that's a blessing. For some people, making friends is easy, but for others, it's not that. What's the problem with you two? Just maybe it'll come back. Um, when you look at the painting, you're going to see that it is a keyboard. It's actually going to be placed in our cafeteria, and it's going to be lengthwise so that it is actually a long keyboard. Um, what the kids did was they decided on a keyboard because Josh, um, who is in a wheelchair, loves using his keyboard. And we talked about music as something that brings kids together as well. And then they chose words to represent each one of them, and they placed those words on the keys with their handprints. So when you look at it, you can see that that is, um, that's basically how that's laid out. So we're going to display that in our cafeteria as soon as um, we get that back to the middle school and um, show it off a little bit more. We're going to make sure that it's there. Um, I will send all of you the link to this so that you can actually view it all the way through. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure it's on our webpage if it's not already there. But we'll make sure it's there as well. But no, of course now it's finished. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, God took us into the dark. Yeah. Oh, really? Just kids your age and you're great. And it comes from that fundamental belief that every child is a gift and has a gift to share with the world. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. But I will make sure that you can get to see Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Rexroad. Next, I would like to um, bring some highlights. Uh, we'll start with track and field competed at the county championships over the weekend, and the following athletes will be moving on to compete at the District 3 championship level Saturday, May 16th at Shippenburg, Shippensburg University. Kira Miller for the 100-meter hurdles, Steph Sievers for javelin, Shane Bookwalter for javelin, Jonathan Charles, the 100-meter, 200-meter, and long jump, and Drew Kresge for discus. discus. The softball team defeated Berks Catholic 1-0 on Saturday. They will advance to the semifinals of the Berks County Championship, and they will play tomorrow, Tuesday, May 12th, at 5 p.m. at Lions Field against Twin Valley. And the baseball team won tonight. They did beat, um, defeated Muhlenberg in the semifinal round for counties. The score was 10 to 6, and they will move on to the county title um, game, which will be held Wednesday at 7 o'clock, First Energy Stadium. Uh, team to be announced. I'm not sure who they will be playing. So there's some of our highlights in um, the sports world. Next, I was um, given information this morning that. 
We have uh, received some Why Not nominations from our production of The Sound of Music. And nominations for Why Not is equivalent, I'm told, to um, like the, did they say the grant? Um, the Tony Awards, that it's it's like right up there for the Tony Awards. So for most memorable male solo vocal, Ryan Young, Idol Wit, Idol Weiss, most memorable duet trio quartet, Jake Berge, Jordan Corey, and Ryan Young, No Way to Stop It was what they sang. Most memorable small group, Sophie Gialretto, Rachel Lau, Theo O'Kirsey, Sam Funk. Daniel Schlegel, Anna Schlegel, Christy Day, and Peyton Fritz, Do Re Mi, and the production number, Full Ensemble, So Long Farewell. Um, we also had some most memorable lead actress recommend, or, uh, nominations as well as uh, feature female solo, choreography, chorus, stage crew, and overall production. So these um, awards will be on, and I apologize because this was put in an email um, Wednesday the 20th of May at 6.30 p.m. So I'll let you know how we make out. Um, and that concludes the superintendent's report. Mr. Martino, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Torsha. Mrs. Bites, the Laser Foundation. I would just like to add that that was, that doesn't surprise me in the least because that was a phenomenal production that I did get to see this year. I'm so glad I did um, as far as the Blazer um, Foundation update, uh, the spring auction is currently live. Bidding ends this Sunday, May 17 at 9 p.m. The link can be found at the auction.blazerfoundation.org website. Blazer Foundation is happy to report that they have successfully raised the $8,000 necessary for the match for the greenhouse at the middle school. Mm -hmm. As you may recall, they received a $5,000 grant from Pottstown Hospital and a wellness grant to get the ball in motion, and they were moving. They were challenged to raise $8,000 more to get a match of $8,000. So uh, we understand that the check is in the mail, literally, at what point it will be brought to the school board for approval, of course, to be accepted, and then they would like to get the greenhouse ordered and uh, constructed during the summer. The uh, teachers are really lining up, are, are enthusiastic about it. It was intended to, to service the FNC family and consumer science teachers, but the science teachers are really getting excited about it. So that's a real um, benefit. And I believe Mr. Hurley is helping spearhead the efforts. Do, you, do we have a location? Do we have... Um, yeah, it's going to be on the side of the middle school, near the, where the science rooms are at. On the side where the science rooms are. Great. So... Um, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank the uh, foundation for their uh, efforts with bringing that to middle school, and I can't wait to see that project now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mrs. Bites. Question for Mrs. Bites. Mrs. Bites, would you find out exactly how much money the, the uh, Blazer Foundation has raised uh, since being reconstituted? Sure. Can you share that with the board and the public? I think they've been doing an amazing job, and uh, you hear stories like this, but in the aggregate, I don't think anybody really realizes just how impactful they have been um, since, since Stephanie Conklin has taken the realm there and, and really driven this thing forward. Will do. Thank you. Any other board comments or questions? Any public comment on the report by Mrs. Torsher and Mrs. Pike?
since we don't have a cover for this, we just put it in there. I didn't see it on the last, last meeting like this. So is there a question, Mr. Temple? Yeah, is there something to change on here that uh, it must be able to give your uh, copy after you made the statement, not before you make the statement? No, the policy has always been that the, the copy is supposed to be presented ahead of time. Okay. And if I come up to the district office here and get uh, copies of the policies or anything, could you, could you use the microphone, please? A little bit, yeah. Uh, Shut it off me last time so I can talk. Uh, if I come up to the high school and get copies of policies or anything, uh, do I get them free? Policies are on the website. They're all online. All the policies are online. Well, I mean, if I, wanted to, you to, if I wanted a copy from here, would I get it free? I don't want us to make copies yes. for you. Yes. No. No. There. No. There's a charge for copies. There's a charge for copies. There's you, a charge you, for copies. How much is that charge? It's twenty-five cents per. Twenty-five page. cents. And per. You no, wait. Well, you're not letting her finish. It's twenty-five cents what? Per page. Per page. Are you willing to pay twenty-five cents per page for my copy that I give you on my? What I give you, Mr. Templin, if I ever request copies from you, I'll give you twenty-five cents a copy. I mean, everybody. Basically, but I haven't asked you for any copies. You should pay for the, for the public copies, too. Mr. Devlin, I don't understand your question. The, the problem with having the school district pay for, I mean, our policies and procedures are almost, what, a thousand pages or more. So every time a member of the public came and said, give me a copy of your policies and procedures, the school district would be showing out $250 a pop. Well, so, well, I, I, my time is... I'm just saying that we've made them available on the website for anybody to see and download it on their own. But just say you require though, if if you want a copy from us, you should be paying us for our copies as well. The point the point of the copies is thank you. Okay. The point of the copies is so that they can be entered into the record. Without them, it's very difficult to transcribe what's being said into the record. And there's always the um, ability if somebody wants to email them to. Um, Mrs. Kramer or the secretary or ahead of time, we can print it out for them and then you wouldn't have any cost. All right. Thank you.
with Mrs. Hefter, with Colton as a teacher and then a principal, and, and coming through the district. I'm very, very invested here, and tonight is very rewarding for me as a parent and second as a professional. Because without that challenge, I probably wouldn't have opened that door. So thank you very much, and, and thank you again um, for embracing it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to curriculum, Mr. Kurtz. I'm going to turn this presentation over to Mr. Doty. I had a conflict for that meeting, and Mr. Doty presided very capably in my absence. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Um, in the curriculum committee uh, meeting we had in um, April, I believe it was April 24th, um, we have presentations about the classroom sizes and staffing uh, for the high school and middle school and uh, received the recommendations from the principals there uh, about what they would prefer and how they could shift things around and move them. I think we all received those presentations. Um, so we didn't really come to any conclusion at this point from, from the curriculum side of things. Um, so I think there's still some debate that has to happen there. And, reconcile that with uh, finance. Oh, also we talked about online classes and being able to offer them to our students as well. Um, so, and then I know that one of the issues was that we couldn't, couldn't offer any courses online that we had previously offered as an in-class in uh, or brick and mortar class, so to speak. Uh, so that was one of the Thank you, Mr. Doty, and I note the next meeting is May 18th. Yes. Any questions from the board or comments? Public comments or questions? Hi, uh, Steve Miller, uh, 600 Ridge Drive. I have a quick uh, quick question for you. You said that you couldn't offer online classes for classes that have already been presented to the board. Could you explain why? Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. So classes that were already offered within the district, uh, there's a limitation basically that says that we can't offer that as an online course. So we couldn't cut it from the curriculum, you know, in-house. I'm not sure what. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, an it's really a union right. contractual obligation. Thank you.
um, quote, uh, the, the turf track and court LLC contract. That's actually something, this is a different, I don't want to say it's a different vendor. I believe the vendor is the same, but we're going directly with them instead of through a third party. Um, so not only was their price cheaper than what we've been paying in the past, if we agreed to sign a three-year service contract, it's approximately 10% discount from what it would be if we just paid yearly. Um, it's something we have to do every year, so it made sense to the board or the committee to actually sign that three-year service contract to get a 10% discount. The last item might actually be a positive, but we had spoken a few months ago about uh, Celtic Spirits Martial Arts that would like to use the gymnasium here to offer um, martial arts lessons and they did get zoning approval through the township for the use. We would not have to improve the driveway at this time and they're looking to use the building Monday and Wednesday nights currently uh, for approximately two and a half to three hours and um, our current facilities use policy really is a one-time use fee and it would cost them, I think, thousands of dollars a month if we utilize that policy. So the committee looked at if they're renting it for a session or a season or a year round, uh, what would what would a fair rate be to charge them? And we looked at seventy-five dollars a night, and um, you know, Casey felt that that would certainly cover the cost of the lighting and that kind of thing. And I believe what we talked about is we can set the door be open for a certain period of time for them to get in and then um, it would relock. So those were the items that we were looking at and I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you might have or ask for help if you have ones like we need to. Hey, a few, few quick questions. If I'm not mistaken, I was adding this up in my head, it approaches like $60,000 for these repairs? Yes. So small, I said that we have money in the budget for maintenance and, and repairs, and um, if the I think it was we discussed if the cooling tower cost wasn't in there, we can hold off until the next budget cycle. But if the money's there, to me it would make sense to spend it from this year's budget. And, and if we ran out part of or we ran out the part of the building to anyone, how do we secure the rest of the building? Well, we did talk about that because we don't currently have gates in this building. Um, we talked about the potential to install a video camera. Um, the, what we currently talked about was trying this without really securing the building other than all the doors being locked. Uh, they are looking at a small group. They don't let people wander. They're all like, you know, kids are sick. They have to go to the bathroom and adults force them. And pretty much kind of say on a trial that uh, we're, we're working on trusting you. If we find issues or we find that things are, are moving around or people where they shouldn't, then we'll have to either secure um, the building and you'll know, either need to look at recouping that cost from them or just tell them they can't use it. I just think it's something the facility committee needs to look at going forward in case you start doing the same thing for multiple organizations. Well, and we did, I mean, we did kick some of those ideas around. Um, the cost for those at this point, it would be it would be an upfront cost that maybe we recoup over five, ten years, but it's not something that we would, you know, break even on in the beginning. So we kind of looked at the potential for moving forward, sort of with an honor system in this case, and we might have to look at each case individually. Other comments or questions? Oh, yeah, just had a quick question. Um, HC with the cafeteria lights. Um, have you guys reached out to the energy company to see if there's any rebates that come along with that as well? It's it's all in there already. The rebates are too. Yeah, the act, the act one one twenty nine rebate um, is is in there, um, and that's right from Med Med. Med okay. And actually, I just received the approval today that our application was approved. So it's, it's actually, I forwarded off to uh, Mr. Small and Mr. Miller's staff for their funds. Thanks. What, what's our, um, on, the, on that employee that has down the energy savings based on uh, 10 cents a kilowatt hour, what, what's our, what do we charge a kilowatt hour? What are we paying per kilowatt hour? 
I don't know about having to check, check the bills. We, we receive, we receive the, the initial credit that they offer is a five cent per kilowatt hour up front for any energy savings. They've, they've extended that and have given incentives if you have the projects completed by August 12th. So the, the intent is to have the, the fixtures here and pretty much the day after school closes, we're going to be in that cafeteria to have it done. Because we have to verify with Ed, <coughs> excuse me, that the job is complete by the 12th. Because that's when their big and energy crunch hits with the heat, so that they want everybody trying to save as much energy by then as possible. Um, then on the um, the uh, turf contract, uh, this this is. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Mr. Basil didn't ask this one. This is forever after Alley. <laughs> so on, it, it says termination of services. Uh, it says if we terminate, in the event of termination, uh, they'll be paid a uh, reasonable termination expenses. What, what are the reasonable termination expenses? The balance of the contract, though, is that? And this is kind of a nebulous uh, termination date. So, um, just curious if we should get that mm -hmm. that one more. Yeah. And then my, my final um, item was for the for the running out of the gym. So did, did, sorry, I know we, we talked about covering costs, but what it actually generates a revenue. Um, so I think that's where we have to go for the I, I think honestly it would because realistically you're looking at lights for and a half hours. Um, not. So when, you, when you guys kind of came up with that figure, did you... Did what you was the up? question? Well, are we actually making money or are we just breaking even? I would think we would be because I, I can't imagine the electric's going to be $75 for the company. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just want you to know that I, I think it's a, you know, obviously, like, like uh, Mr. Fraser said, we have to get fixed infrastructure here so the more we can utilize the better so obviously we're gonna make some money on it. Uh, you know, it's nice for the to have a community event but you know, I'm sure these guys are, are a for profit uh, company, right? They are and and I mean I think it's something that we could relook at at some point too, but they're gonna be starting out. I don't know what the they're just a startup so I mean if you make it too high they're Right. They're not going to be here anyway, but I, I think they're looking that hopefully they have something they could grow and maybe they can use it more often. And so I think there is a potential for more right. revenue, but yeah, I mean that, that's something that I think, think the facilities committee should maybe get a more better better handle on for for, for future, so that we know then we then we can actually set a rate that 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 confidence in it going forward that we and we did discuss that you know because we it's also going through policy committee I believe as well right now. And if we set this, because I kind of set the price, and I think we looked at it that it, we can set a case by, by case basis until we have the policy. Okay. Thank you. What, what are the hours? You mentioned two and a half to three hours. What are the hours that will be in the... the, the it was uh, like 5.30 to 8. Or, so, I don't have that with me. I apologize. So it is... Um, you know, time we're going to be heating the building in the winter that we normally would have been turning down the thermostats by then, right? Well, and I try to look at Monday nights. We're here anyway, yeah, at right. least two or three nights out of the month, so. Um, it's true. Yeah, so you would be, yes, you would have to be tossed off on the And did you toss around numbers um, for gates? What are we talking, tens of thousands? To gate off the, what, four areas? Um, or did you just not look at? We didn't it? look at gate. We didn't look at firm numbers for the gates okay. yet. Uh, we did talk about security cameras. I think we were looking at three or four thousand dollars if you want to put cameras in. Um, we also talked about if you had, if the building had an alarm system, if you could have you know motion type <laughs> sensors. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So um, are gates something that we wouldn't consider? No, I don't think it's that we wouldn't. It was just I, I think for right now. Um, and, and I think it's something we can investigate, but I don't know that we, we weren't looking to do that before they came in here just because of the cost. I don't think it's something that we can say that you could reasonably say to one group, well, you need to cover this cost. I think if you're going to do it, you need to do it for the fact yeah, that you're going to it. I am doing about the precedence now if other people want to use the gyms and the other buildings. We're sort of locked into this now, and I'm not sure that we really. I think so. 
we're, we're giving it out at twenty five dollars an hour, basically. I don't think we are because I think I think it's an agree. We would have an agreement with them, say we have with the Rage Soccer Club, that be specific to that group, mm -hmm. or approving it for that group, and that you'd have to look at each group that one. In policy, we are trying to get right. more universal in right. that, though. People are using gyms, right? You know, and they're outside organizations. That is, you know, we're trying to uh, standardize. A question about the lighting contract. There's 16 250-watt mo halide lane type fixtures at this location presently. So this is to replace all of them? Yes, and the reason being is because, A, I think at least half of them are out. B, when they replace them, they have to run a, um, a lift. So it would make sense to change them all. The regular bulbs that we have um, burn out much more quicker than the LEDs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the LEDs, they may not have to change them for 10 years. Whereas the other ones, so if they rented the equipment, yeah, it would just feel. They more actually do that with the highway lights too. When they get those big cranes out, they just yeah. do them whether they need them or not. So I understand that the genesis of that. Then thank you. And then one more question on the chart: um, location, material, cost, labor. The last column says mercury vapor rated life in hours. Is that some sort of comparison, or are we introducing mercury into the building? No, that's that's just a comparison for the, if you the want life the mercury expectancy ones. of the old bulbs compared to the life expectancy of the new ones. Right, okay. So the LED, let's be clear, there is no mercury involved in these no. new, this no. new lighting system. Great, thank you. The, the guarantee for them is 50,000 hours. Is the warranty one, actually. Thank you. The uh, facility's request for the gym here in this building was two nights a week, 5.30 and 8.30 through the... 31st of December this year. So at that point, I think we could be about it. Going back to Mr. Rathgeb's concern earlier, I don't know if we ever really came to a conclusion uh, as a direction we'd like to move. Can we get a contract with a specific number or something less nebulous than a reasonable amount for the next meeting or whenever we're going to approve this? I, I would direct. That was my key. That was my year. Yeah. The, Field Turf is who made, who installed our turf. That's who makes the turf. Um, turf Tracking Court used to be their subcontractor. Field Turf has found a cheaper vendor um, from out of state to come in to do the job. Um, Field Turf's price to me was $2,900. Turf Tracking Court was $2,500. I asked them, is there a savings for a three-year agreement? They said yes. So they came back with a three-year agreement and they reduced the first year and therefore only gave us a 3% increase every year after that. Um, they, have, they are who has done the work for Daniel Boone School District for field turf since the turf has been installed. So they're already, they, they know the wear areas, that they already have the history. Um, so, Casey, we're not questioning that. Right. The question is, if we terminate, it says reasonable cost. I think and what you would do, and I can reach out to them and find out yeah, what, yeah. what that what that would be. Open -ended. Open -ended. Right. I think a reasonable cost would be, you know, if, if it's termination without cause, right? That's the first one, um, and then reasonable cost would be whatever the the single year contract would, rate would be. Um, that's what they'd be reimbursed for. So if it's twenty five hundred versus twenty one hundred dollars, go back and credit them the four hundred bucks and call it a day. Um, move forward. I mean, we're not talking thousands of dollars that here. Part of the contract, but obviously you want to have you want to have the ability to terminate with cause for performance or some other issue without penalty. Casey, if you could, I mean, see if you could get a number. Yeah, I will. I'll email them tomorrow. Thank you. Any public comment on building and grounds? Um, I have a couple questions. One was about the turf. How, how old is the turf now? 
It's about seven years. Seven years, and I recall it was supposed to be maybe replaced in ten. So is that still the number that would be replaced? I think we'll be talking about it still through about fifteen. They're looking like twelve to fifteen, depending on use right now. Okay, so then the three years would be like a normal time frame that we would probably keep that company. Yeah. Um, and the other one would be gymnastics. Um, I was wondering if we do set this as a precedence to have people come in and use our facility. Did do you have them have a, do they have liability insurance for themselves so they're completely covered and the school is not held liable for injury? Right. And will the kids sign a waiver, the participants sign a waiver, um, so that we are totally off the hook with their parents? And if, just if they have liability because gymnastics is off, they do get injured a lot of gymnastics. Um, I think it was actually like a Taekwondo, but I mean, still, okay, take, yeah. you know. But um, yes, they, they do have liability insurance, and hopefully they do sign waivers, but we can certainly have that as a stipulation. And because if we move forward with that, I would like to make sure every group does exactly the same thing sign waivers and have their liability. All right, thank you. Thank you. And our next meeting is June 1st at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Dusky. Moving on to item nine, finance. Who's going to make the preliminary budget presentation, Mr. Small? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. I place before you uh, tonight a copy of what was sent electronically is the actual PDE 2028 format of the preliminary budget for 1516. Uh, just uh, this is what was discussed in the Finance Committee meeting on the 30th. Moving forward, uh, just some notes that I included with that. On the revenue side, your local real estate millage remains at 28.9618 mills. Uh, aside from that, on the revenue side, it's just the normal uh, uh, revenue items generated by various taxes, uh, the local taxes. On the state revenue side, as I stated before, with all the, the uh, controversy that's going on in Harrisburg right now over the, the governor's budget, all of the state revenue is flatlined as far as basic ed and special ed, in spite of the fact that <clears throat> the governor's budget uh, drove out about 740,000 additional revenue. That is, is uh, obviously uh, still under debate. So we have included nothing in this preliminary budget. And as we move along, as we find out things, we will certainly add them in when it becomes certain. Um, I also made adjustment in the transportation subsidy just based on the activity and the way that your, your transportation subsidy, subsidy is driven out the year after the transportation is provided. So for next year, based on this year's service and just looking at the, the history a little bit, I, I did reduce that uh, a little bit. In addition, your debt service subsidy is reduced because of the refinancing. You're paying less, therefore, you're going to receive less. And also, moving forward, uh, keep in mind that your highest, uh, your, your bond issues that are producing the most reimbursement are being paid down. So there will be a, a drop in the next few years in your rental subsidy or your debt service subsidy. On the federal side, as of last Thursday, we did receive allocations for Title I, Title II next year. The largest impact was in the uh, Title I area, which was a reduction of approximately 29,000 at this point, uh, which was a little surprising because there has been some talk that some of the negative impact that you realized about four years ago, I believe it was, with sequestration, that some of that was going to be recovered. But uh, that, at this point, is not the case. So I did reflect the reduction of 29,000 in the Title I uh, allocation area. Title II was also impacted, but not, not in any great degree. 
The other piece that I uh, did pull out of uh, the uh, state side, and I had mentioned this at the Finance Committee meeting, is the Ready to Learn grant, because the consensus is that is being removed from the state budget this year, being replaced by a portion of accountability block grant that got removed back in 1011. But once again, a lot of controversy, but I simply removed the revenue side and the expense side, and at such time as we know for sure what is coming forward with your uh, uh, replacement funding through block grant. The, the consensus, once again, is it's going to be part of your basic ed subsidy. It's not going to be a separate grant moving forward. So uh, I, I did adjust that as well. That pretty much summarizes the state side. And on the expenditure side, as a result of the discussion at the Finance Committee meeting and uh, in meetings in the past as it relates to staff reductions related to uh, enrollment reduction and aligning class sizes to your uh, administrative guidelines. This budget does reflect uh, a reduction of 11 positions, three of them being retirees. That's pretty much on the, on the expenditure side and is the largest impact that and the related uh, benefits, of course. Moving from the actual budget document, I also, as a result of the Finance Committee meeting, I distributed two copies of the five-year plan that we've been working on during the course of the year. And in that discussion on the 30th, we uh, discussed that we have had in the, in the five-year plan for some time now the potential closure in the 17-18 year, but we also discussed the potential of moving it up one year to the 16-17 year. So what we have there are two different scenarios, one with the closure 16-17 and the other for the 17-18 year. And of course, the, the 15, 16 year reflects what is in the preliminary budget document. Can I answer any questions? Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Small. If you could just verbally explain the benefits and the drawbacks financially in the district's fiscal health of closing the building in 16, 17 versus 17, 18. Well, the, the obvious, uh, if, if you reduce your, your uh, salaries in one of the early years, it's going to have an impact going out the next two years in this plan. Um, you're looking at, at a feature's contribution in the 16-17 year of 29.27. Uh, so if you weighted impact your fund balance, Moving forward, when you get to the 17-18 year, that's when Peacers begins to flatline. Well, actually, the 16-17 year. 16-17 Peacers is at uh, 29.27, and that's up 4% over the 15-16 year. Then you get to the 17-18 year, it only moves up by to uh, by one one uh, percent to the 30.25, and then the next year is only 31.28. So you're you're grabbing the savings there that first year, uh, which produce an impact to your fund balance. Mr. Small, that, that you have it in the budget, the potential to move it up a year, yes. but that's still going to be based on the actual declining enrollment that's and whether that triggers it or not. That's why I have the word potential. Right. It's based on everything that happens between now and then and the plan we had discussed back in in uh, March, the idea of getting a plan in place and developing a trigger, if certain things happen, we're prepared. We're not going to be in crisis mode. So I just put this in front of you this way so that uh, you have an idea of the impact that it can have. I, I just want to thank you all because for the manner in which you put this together because in the past year serving on this board and watching the previous boards do this budget process, it was not nearly as smooth um, or as um, number-centric, it seems, as it's been this year. So thank you for what your team has done. It's, 
it's a work in progress. It's very fluid. We can, just like I said last Thursday, when we received the information on federal allocations, you have the capability to plug it in and see the impact. And, and before the public jumps up and asks, this is still preliminary. We won't vote finally on this until June, correct? Well, you, you're going to vote a week from tonight on the preliminary, on the and then there's a 30-day window for public review, and then the 22nd of June, I believe, is the business session in June. We will vote on your final. And, uh, and I'm sure that will be, uh, when you make your approvals, it's going to be some time before Harrisburg has voted. And just as a footnote, one of the things that we discussed in the Finance Committee as regards to some of these assumptions and the five-year numbers that you guys are looking at in front of you, I believe we also shared um, those spreadsheets from the Finance Committee meeting at the end of April as well. The, um, one of the things that we're looking at trying to accomplish also is to reach out to the uh, Pennsylvania Economy League. It's a group that uh, works with school districts to help them assess uh, enrollments and uh, building capacities and things of those nature that we're trying to address on our own. Uh, the finance committee felt that it was probably a good idea. These people have a lot of expertise in this area. They've been doing it for decades, uh, working with dozens and dozens of school districts uh, to bring their own models and formulas to the table to make these determinations. Um, and we thought it would also be helpful to have a third party come in to do that as opposed to trying to wrestle it with ourselves. Now, I reached out to the Pennsylvania Economy League and spoke to Susan Baker there regarding the, um, there's basically two separate courses or projects that would take place. One is an enrollment study, and the other one's a building utilization study. Uh, the first, which is in, uh, the enrollment study, we take, let's see, they, they come in, if the board approved it sometime in June, um, and uh, begin working on gathering the information that they need. They wait until they got the October enrollment numbers before completing their study and then from there produce a report before year end uh, for the board's consideration to look at. Uh, the cost of this is probably around $15,000 to get done. The, um, the other piece of it, which is the uh, building utilization study, um, I've been playing phone tag with the lead um, consultant architect. Uh, his name is a, uh, Jim Thompson. And so we have not been able to connect as of yet to set up the date or time or get additional information to share with the board at this time. As soon as I have that, I'll email it to everybody. One of the things that we're trying to work on that we will do after this meeting is um, the finance committee wanted to bring in Susan Baker from uh, this corporation to discuss with the board what they do, um, take the, have basically a QA and a on the processes they put in place and what assumptions they use to do their modeling. And uh, we're trying to coordinate the time when their schedules and our schedules will match. So after this meeting, we'll sit down with the Finance Committee and we'll try to pick a couple of dates that work best over the next three or four weeks that I can get back to them uh, with that we can all get together for a meeting. Thank you, Mr. Pedro. Are there any other questions from the board or comments from Mr. Small? Uh, actually, Mr. Martinez, uh, actually, actually, Mr. Mr. Curse a little bit here. Uh, since I'm, I'm, I think I'm the only member that's both on the uh, finance committee as well as the curriculum committee, so I kind of see uh, both sides. Uh, so uh, at the next week's meeting, uh, do we intend to um, actually maybe uh, uh, formalize uh, a curriculum recommendation as far as staffing levels? Uh, I don't know how we would determine that. What are you looking at specifically? Well, I guess so. Uh, the recommendations from uh, the uh, finance committee was uh, two cuts to high school, one to middle school, and um, eight at the elementary level. Is that uh, five plus three retirees? Eight total. Eight, eight total positions, right? Okay. So, um, you know, my my concern with with the uh, with the high school uh, for Mr. McKnight's uh, uh, presentation was that. Um, uh, you know, I, I know we had the issue of the um, striving this as the uh, classes that had less than 10, 10 individuals. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Mr. McKnight will, uh, if two cuts are, are, are done, it will happen. Um, I'm just concerned that uh, we're, we're kind of uh, taking uh, his, his vision of what the high school could be.
being in and kind of uh, putting the kibosh down before he even got his feet on the room. And, uh, you know, he, he did say that uh, we as a board need to decide what our vision of high school will be, whether it's, it's uh, generalist as it is now, or we want to specialize, um, which is a decision that uh, is, is, is not going to be made in a week. Um, and then we need to come together as a board to figure that out. And uh, that, that could, uh, in turn, impact uh, where we can cut. And maybe that's bringing, uh, maybe we do bring in some more of these um, uh, online uh, classes that, that we could flesh out some, some items with. So that's, that's number one. Number two, the middle school. I know we did have uh, four cuts last year. Is that yes. correct? Um, and um, while uh, uh, you know, Ms. Rex did, uh, did offer uh, the ability to, to cut one but still keep our teams uh, in sixth grade, she did point out that uh, there's been uh, some hiccups with, uh, with seventh and eighth are now sharing teams. There's been some issues there they've been working on. Uh, we also don't know exactly where the, um, how the middle school is going to flesh out as far as you know, they're one of the top middle schools in the state. Will those grades get maintained? Uh, or not. Uh, so I'm curious to see how that fleshes out. And then, um, you know, uh, I guess my, my concern there is we, if the cutting aid, we will have some classes probably topping out 26, 27 kids. Um, uh, so, you know, what I would uh, recommend, uh, my suggestion is that uh, board members, especially on curriculum, uh, maybe take a tour of Amity. I believe Amity does have one class that has 25 in it right now, uh, to see how that class functions, um, and to see if it actually makes sense to, to get 27 kids into, into one of our classrooms. Okay, but in terms of actually issuing a recommendation to the full board, what would the effect of a discussion in curriculum committee yield? Like I'm asking, I guess, um, what's the end goal of the end goal? Does does the recommendation from the finance committee, uh, you know, does that actually sync up with our, our curriculum or something? You know, okay, whether we can handle that or not, essentially, is that accurate the way that I'm portraying that, whether we can absorb the cuts, the proposal the cuts, whether that's where, whether that's going to impact uh, what we do uh, in front of k All right. I think we we can do that. I'd like to have um, perhaps Mrs. Torsha and Mr. Small attend that curriculum meeting if possible. Um, in terms of recommendation, I don't think it would benefit more to have dueling recommendations, but if we're looking into the effects of these um, changes on curriculum and that's right, something we can investigate, but at the end of the day, it's going to be up to the full board to determine whether or not we're going to Oh, sure. Uh, I, yeah, absolutely, it's up to the full board, but as uh, you know, a, a board member, I think you want to have most, most, as much information as, as possible to make an informed decision, and uh, I certainly think that there's, uh, uh, there's you know, since we're, we're, not, we're not expanding at, at all kindergarten in any way, there's certainly cuts to be made. Uh, I'm just not sure that it can take. All right. Thank you. Mr. Basil, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Basil, one question. And when we're doing this modeling um, of when the trigger would, would happen towards possibly closing a school, are we going to first have the opportunity as a board to look at what the class size would be and then have that as the model to fit in the school? Or are we going to look at it from the reverse and say, well, we're going to close the school, so this is going to be the class size? I guess that's the chicken and the egg question. I, oh, it, well, that's really it's a philosophical board question. Well, and I think it's up to the board to decide. That's I'm, I'm not driving it one way or the other. This this particular company, what they do is they basically take a look at uh, when it comes to building utilization first and foremost. So they're going to take a look at the buildings, the plans. They're going to take a look at how they're currently used, and they're going to be looking for impact uh, input from us in terms of um, I'd imagine class size. They're going to be taking a look at their policies. And procedures. They're going to be taking a look at, um, you know, where we have uh, computer labs or how we uh, break out into these separate rooms for for IEPs and, and special ed needs. So I think they take a comprehensive look at all those things and they're looking for feedback from the board on what it is that we're looking for, and then they'll adjust their model accordingly. Again, I haven't had a direct conversation with the architect. It's been with um, the other side of the coin, which is the enrollment studies. So this could actually dovetail into the discussion of whether.
let it remove a another grade into the middle school? Is that I think we can have that complete. I, mean, I think what I'd like to get out of this is getting back to your original question, which is, okay, we see the number on the plans, which says that each of these buildings house X number of students. And so the question is, is that how we use the building? Is there a more efficient way of utilizing our building than we currently do? That, that question hasn't been posed. I mean, I think everybody just assumes that we are using our buildings efficiently. Maybe we're not. I don't know what the answer to that is. And maybe these people can help us make that determination. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, once we have a under better understanding of which each building um, capacity, actual capacity is, we could also part and parcel of that, have a discussion that we had been having is, in light of a declining enrollment, how would you use these, these physical assets to best complement the curriculum that you want to offer? Is that a five through eight middle school? Is it seven and eight as part of some other separate program or moving eight up? I mean, we've heard of lots of different ideas that are out there, and I think that they could probably give us a couple different scenarios. If you do this model, this is how you would use the building. If you do this particular curriculum model, this is how you would use the buildings. And it's up for us to decide which way we're going to go from, from a curriculum perspective. Uh, but they model this stuff both ways for declining enrollments and utilization of buildings and, and growing school districts and, and utilization of buildings and, and building new facilities all together. So um, we're going to learn a lot from them, I suppose. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Wolf, if I may, the question I heard you ask was will closing a building drive class sizes? And, and I'm part of the Finance Committee. The answer in my mind is no, because we have not talked about increasing class sizes. So if we were to close the building, it doesn't mean class sizes are going to jump to 28, 30, 32, or anything like that. And right now, the policy has recommended class sizes. For the, the early grades, not. Yeah, but we haven't, we haven't really said we're going to increase the, the higher grades either. And I'm not saying that anyone has said. I'm just you know, the perception is that's what it means. And the perception, you know, the perception in the community has that if we close the school, that's how we're going to do it. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that that's a perception, and sometimes perception is often reality. And I yeah. think it should be something we just have to be aware of and discuss. Yeah, what we discussed though is, is how what we have would fit. Oh, clearly. So I mean that, that's. Anything contrary to that hasn't really been discussed. I think Mr. Wolf makes a good point, though. I mean, um, there's been no discussion whatsoever in any format about increasing increasing class sizes. We, we haven't. That's a policy decision, and we haven't discussed policy at all. All we've discussed is what are our physical um, uh, capabilities in terms of the plants that we have, and. What do our policies allow, and what kind of curriculum are we looking to use moving forward in the face of a declining enrollment? And that's basically been the nutshell of the discussion, uh, operating within the constraints that we have, uh, not expanding those constraints to say that you know, class sizes are going to go up, and therefore we can use a, a different policy to change our physical use. Okay, uh, that kind of segues into my next thought that I just remembered. Um, about a month or two ago, I had asked if we had reverse engineered our modeling for what we anticipate the kindergartners coming in, what, you know, what our enrollment is going for, and coming in the future by applying it to the past and seeing, you know, is it, does it work? Is it close? What's the delta between what that model showed and what we actually saw? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let uh, Mr. Smallfield that one. That came up uh, again, and it was something that he was working on um, trying to tackle as well. So at the next finance committee meeting, we're going to have that ready. We did produce an initial response that wasn't uh, exactly what you asked for, but uh, we have a preliminary draft in place right now. But at the next finance committee, we will be coming forward with that reverse study. Thank you. Any public comment on that? I have a question. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Mr. Small, you mentioned um, the debt service subsidy deduction due to the refinances. Did you calculate that into our savings when, you, um, when they were estimated for the uh, refinancing company? Yes, that the, the numbers uh, in the expense columns here of the reduction is the actual expense side, but if that was discussed at the time that 
you're paying less, therefore you're subsidy. Your subsidy would be less. Like, like, and, and what category is that? What number is it? Talk about the, the subsidy portion is under the state revenue debt service subsidy. Just under transportation subsidy. And the savings on the actual payment is under expenditures under the 900 debt, debt service. And then I put in parentheses in the three years that the refinance impacted the uh, actual savings on payment. Thank you. And then one other question. Uh, is there some way that we can illustrate um, for the district what we do get for our uh, $53 million budget? Uh, this is, you know, a budget. It has the categories, but is there some way to illustrate which programs we will be providing um, in this budget? Uh, when you say programs, I understand there's some sort of service that can provide um, an overview, a marketing study can be done. You can sure I talked about it privately. Right. I, I think you're referring to the uh, the uh, national business managers organization have their, what they call their meritorious budget report, which is a marketing tool and goes into a, a great deal of detail with, with graphs and charts, and and that is something that we're working toward. Uh, it usually takes at least one to two years to build a foundation. With them, uh, there's a what I want to describe is they they don't anticipate your official submission until after a couple of years of, of trial run because it is really sophisticated. But it is a marketing tool that can be used in the community with real estate brokers, uh, any number of organizations uh, to market your district. So you're saying we wouldn't even pursue that until we had two good budgets. Like, well, you know, create the foundation. I, I, I don't have a problem moving forward here in the next year of, of uh, laying the groundwork and applying for the process for the program. Okay, I'm interested. But it is, in it is through ASCO, the National Business Managers Organization, it's called the Meritorious Budget Project. Thank you. I would just add, after that, PCIU has a meritorious budget. Um, I think they call it their, it's in their annual report, and they bring it down to the number of students and families affected by each program. It's very interesting to see some of the effects. I think um, there's over 250,000 people or something directly affected by uh, PCI programs. So it's very interesting from that perspective. Um, so I'm glad to see that we're considering doing that because it really lets the community know what they're getting through their tax dollars. I'm sorry, Mr. Martino. I actually forgot one thing. Um, I also asked Mr. Small and the other board members who might, might see that. Um, you'll see, and if you recall, uh, folks who call with Mr. Sullivan was here, uh, part of his uh, proposals back then where he, he had, uh, you know, his recommendation was to have smaller tax increases each year to, uh, in the future to balance uh, the budget with teachers' increases and all that. So uh, you, you'll see on the second page that there are uh, he did put uh, the Act 1 uh, piece in there as far as uh, you know, how much we can raise taxes, what a bill's worth. Um, and um, you know, that's just the point was that at some point you'll see that um, um, taxes aren't raised uh, at some point. We're going to go a cliff where we won't be able to raise taxes enough to uh, offset the uh, future deficits. But of course, we don't know what the state's going to be getting us. We don't know if the state will ever act on pension reform. Um, but, you know, the assumptions that are currently in place that, that at some point we, in the near future, they, we won't be able to raise taxes enough to uh, compensate for that deficit. Okay. Uh, there, there, was, there was a question passed to me. This isn't approved yet, but we've discussed it publicly. Is there any objection to this being placed online? Both scenarios? Yeah. yeah. I know. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Say as long as it's labeled that it's... You're referring to the preliminary budget document or the five-year plan? Or both? Both. Five, both five-year five plans. We're all on. That's fine. Like I said earlier, it is very fluid. It changes daily. So I put it up today. Next week it'll change. But I, I, I think this needs... Just needs to be indicators. Right? Yeah, 
going to say, what can we put on there to make sure it's just like a big ink mark across draft. that thing says draft. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is there any public comment on anything involving finance? Right. I just want copies of these. I didn't get them. No. no. These are Mrs. Torch. I need him from him so I can watermark it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need him from Mr. Small so I can watermark it. You got it. It's on. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, just a comment. Uh, actually, I had two questions. You just answered one. Mr. Mr. Poole, make your name and address, please. Oh, uh, David Poole, 443 Hill Road, Douglasville. Uh, just a comment first. Uh, I, I just want to endorse uh, the comment that uh, Mr. Kurtz made relevant to Mr. Small. It is so great. That uh, I think you call it a number-centric uh, budget, and one that really uh, uh, we're going to be able to take a look at as a public and see what's uh, what's out there. Uh, appreciate that very much. Uh, it's it's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Second, uh, can the board uh, give us any idea of the current status of contract negotiations? The elephant in the room, uh, you know, this has been. Uh, the uh, salary benefits uh, that uh, are a result from the contract that you're currently negotiating. Is there any uh, any information you can share relevant to uh, contract negotiations? Negotiations have started. There there have been two meetings that I'm aware of so far. The first meeting, the DBA presented a proposal to the negotiating committee. And the second meeting, the negotiating committee uh, presented to the DBEA the district's proposal. Um, Has the board formulated essentially what the proposal will be? And do you have, do you have any information about that that you can share? Yeah, well, the whole, the whole proposal will probably be online before too long. Um, but in the meantime, until that, I, I will say that uh, our proposal is basically that the the line be held on salary and benefits so that costs are not increased. And certainly going forward, uh, you know, as we said, we're going to we're going to hit a cliff, and uh, you know, like the uh, the shorter the fall, I guess, the better on that score. So, I mean, uh, but you say it will be online. Yes, but if you look at the at the five year plan, I don't have the five year plan. Well, that, this will be online. Okay, great. And when you look at it, you'll see there's no increase in salary and benefits across the board. Okay. All right. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you. Why wouldn't we just publish the two offers? Oh, we, we can. We just haven't discussed it amongst ourselves yet. Okay. I'm just throwing it out there for the board to consider. Why not? I mean, everybody's claiming for full transparency and disclosure around here. And the contract is 67% of our budget. Why wouldn't we just put the proposals on the table for the, for the public to see sooner or later? They're going to have to see what the end result is um, before anything's uh, approved. Now, Mr. Rathgave and I attended a, a session on negotiations presented by PSBA, and, and they said that that's fully acceptable to put it online. It's just we haven't had a chance to discuss it with the rest of you.
jobs and everything else, but we're going to spend $15,000 for what? Convenience for somebody not to do their job. And I want to ask this number D has been taken off. Will that be magically put back a one at the end of the month to be voted on without any discussion? Item D on the food service manager, Mr. Templin, you're aware we only received one bid. That bid's being reviewed, and that's why it's taken off because the bid's not being being reviewed yet. But if I was I'm saying like, it will not just all but appear at the end of the month be voted on without any public comment. It will, it will appear after it's finished being reviewed. But there will be public comment prior to the vote. There always is. Okay. I just want to answer Mr. Templin's uh, comment regarding the um, Pennsylvania economy leading those studies. The reason why we reached out to those folks was, quite frankly, because there seemed to be a hue and cry from the public or certain sectors of the public that, for whatever reason, didn't trust the numbers that the administration was putting forth. And that was on all the social media uh, that was out there. It was evident in the commentary that was made at the finance committee meetings um, and at the board meetings. And so uh, the board hasn't made any decisions yet whether they're going to hire this group to help or not. All we're trying to do now is get some information from a third party that does this every single day and uh, find out what their methodologies are, how um, accurate are their models, and whether or not that's something that we should invest in. If we're going to be looking at closing a building or not closing a building, if we're going to be looking at realignment of our curriculum and right-sizing our curriculum in a different format than it is now, $15,000 may be a very small investment to make uh, if it's going to put forth a plan uh, for the school district that we're going to enact over a period of years. So, you know, I don't disagree with you. I'd, I'd rather not spend the money, but at the end of the day, I think what we're just trying to accomplish here is doing our due diligence and making sure that the board has options and if the public feels that um, they want to see a different uh, model or to verify the numbers that we have, Perhaps we owe it to the public to give them that information as well. Right? We're just we're just looking for answers. I'm still saying fifteen thousand dollars is way too much public. As it also put a cry out at the last last meeting, five hundred votes on petitions to save our cafeteria work, and that 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 is a, another expense that you're trying to get rid of. So you know, there's a lot of public outcry here. Mrs. Hamlin, I'm sorry, I, I don't want you to be the first, but I, I just handed a note saying that every time somebody comes to the podium, they need to restate their name and address. Okay. Monica Hamill, 508 Monroe Street, Birdsboro. Um, my question, too, is also about uh, the contracts and negotiations. Um, and to find out more, uh, I know you said the staff reduction, I think, was 11 and due to retiring. Um, will we be replacing all of those teachers or just shuffling around teachers? No, it's, it's the proposal is to furrow 11 positions, three of which will be retirees. Oh, three. Yeah, the other eight were, were straight furrows. Okay. Um, and uh, the other thing, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I read the one ads almost, you know, and I noticed on there that we had almost eight positions available for the sports uh, teams. There are a list of all the coaches that are now, they're looking for coaches at Yanny Boone. And I'm just wondering, does any of that have to do with um, union contract or anything, why we're losing our, our sport head, you know, it just seemed kind of odd that we had so many, we, so I didn't know if that was something contractual or not. You, you can no, I, I would say no. It's just regular turnover. Regular turnover? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just curious because it seemed like... I, at least I don't believe that it has anything to do directly with contract negotiations. Okay. And but we'll be able to post the contracts, uh, the negotiation process online? Yes. Okay. Once, once we discuss it, but yes. Okay. Thank you. Steve Miller, uh, 600 Bridge Drive again. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I, I guess one is, you kept saying that to recommend class sizes. You really mean recommend maximum class sizes, right? Not to exceed. 
Yes. So you're recommending that we cut positions and increase our class sizes up to whatever the recommended amounts were, 26, or whatever the higher levels are. Whatever the recommended maximums are, yes. Not to exceed maximums. Even though that may not be in the best interest of uh, children in the education. But however, we're going to keep our revenue a little revenue flat again for the fifth or sixth year, which really means that we're marking and reducing the revenue because of the CPI. As we just saw the contract that's going to increase three to seven years, most of our contracts and expenses, so we're, we're going to keep our, our local revenue flat and we're going to be declining. But we're going to continue to cut programs. Do you not have it? No, 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 excuse me. What, what programs are we cutting? I'm not aware of any. Well, I'm sorry. We're not going to reinstate programs that we did cut. We're not cutting any today. We did cut kindergarten. We did get rid of languages in middle school. We did get we shortened on boards in the past four years. And none of those things have been restored. So those cuts are still out, but we're not cutting anything today. Right. Some of us were here when those cuts were made. Okay, just want to be clear on that. The other question I have is the modeling, the modeling piece. And have we looked at higher education? I saw a lot of interesting study in Portland State, the law work in the state of Washington, helping with modeling. And one of the things they looked at is our core work modeling, which isn't very accurate for the size of the school district, but the really answer. So they used five or six different modeling techniques, and it seemed like they do it for a lot less than the private. So I thought the number was higher than 15,000. Is that an accurate number? We have, a, we have not even gotten a proposal yet from the Pennsylvania Economy League. What we had was a estimate based on a 20-minute phone call that we shared with the board just to provide some additional information. Okay. I said heard a higher number that we're looking at. Uh, there was no higher number ever mentioned. Okay. Well, the paper. Well, the paper, the paper I think, wrote 115,000, but the paper is not always accurate with their comments. Okay. Just another option is higher education. We have some very fine institutions in the state that we never sort of tap them. That's all I have. Be cut. Like it's not making sense to me right now. 
Um, incidentally, I'm glad that you brought up um, Jim, because um, in these classes that you haven't <coughs> cut, I say in quotation marks, you realize that there are kids at the high school now, the gym classes are too large. And while um, half the class or three quarters of the class participates in gym class, the remainder of the kids that can't participate just walk the track. Um, Mr. Wolf, I appreciate your comments earlier about saying that um, perception becomes reality. I don't know if any of you followed um, in the newspaper the other day, it was an article about Exeter School District. And in Exeter School District, they've been, their board has been getting some public pressure regarding a bus depot. And um, one of the parents stood up at that meeting and said they were concerned about that expense because they didn't want Exeter to turn into another Daniel Boone School District that just cuts and cuts and cuts. And um, while public perception is very important, you have to see how your decisions are impacting the public perception, not just here, but elsewhere. So when you say you don't cut, let's look at reality. Well, I think the reality, Ms. Hicks, is that salaries and benefits have not been cut in the school district. They've gone up and up and up every single year. Every no, single year, that. every that's single year, every single year, salaries and benefits have gone up and up and up. They used to take 60% of our budget. They now take 67% of our budget. It's squeezing out all the other things that we have available. So the school district is constantly balancing the constraints of the money it has versus the expense it has to pay. As a result of that, we're always looking for options that are available to us to continue to deliver the best education we can within the constraints of the finances that we have. That's the way it goes. If people don't want to see salaries and benefits go up, that puts a lot of relief on other programs. But that's not the way our system is structured. So every year, as salaries and benefits increase by 6 to 8% a year, we have to figure out where the other 6 to 8% of the budget has to go to cover those increases. Right. Mr. Basil, while your mic's on, yes. is there any secretary correspondence? No. Intermediate year report? Uh, since we changed the schedule, no, I have not been since all that. Well, I was counting on that. Career and first career in technology board? Uh, I don't think I've been so long since we since my last report. Well, just change the schedule. Okay. Yeah, I don't. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Legislative report. I'll just tell you that there are, are several bills in Harrisburg floating around that impact the school district. One, there are competing property tax relief bills, both from the governor from the Senate and from the, the House, none of which will probably get passed. But, and there's even more than one bill in the House competing against each other. So that's your property tax relief. There's a bill proposed in the Senate uh, to change the furloughing of teachers according to evaluation as opposed to seniority. Don't know how that will go either. There's a bill in the Senate to change the current pension plan, which impacts current employees, which if it's passed will probably result in lawsuits, and that's probably not gonna pass either because it not only impacts teachers, it impacts the legislature, legislators themselves. And the fourth thing going on in Harrisburg is the budget, which as Mr. Small mentioned earlier, it's required by law to be finished by June 30th. The anticipation is that it might get done this year by December. And if that's the case, we will have to live on our fund balance from June 30th until December. So that's the legislative report. Mr. Martina, um, did we mistakenly skip the student government report? That, that report will next be week. Yes. next week. I the other we voting. These, re these report outs from the voting meeting to the committee in the whole. Yeah, that's the student government. The next item is the student board representative. I'm sorry. Which is, my mistake. Which is next week. I'm looking out for you down there. Thanks. I just have to wait for Mike. Uh, at the high school, there's a lot going on because it's May and it's high school. Um, there's 23 days left. We all know it. Don't worry. Band concert is tomorrow night. I encourage you all to go. And if you can't make it, we have a chorus concert on Wednesday and an art like showcase on Wednesday. Each of the students that are in the art classes basically have their own wall of just their artwork. It's paintings, it's murals, it's 
beautiful. And they're also painting the one hallway down by the uh, nurse's office in the annex. And there's this beautiful beach mural. So if you ever were in the annex in the high school, it's gorgeous. You should definitely look at it. Uh, prom was this past Friday. It was a blast. And so thank you to all the chaperones if any of you guys are here. Uh, AP's end this week. That is wonderful. Softball, we have a game tomorrow, and baseball was tonight, which Ms. Torsha mentioned. We have five people going to districts from track, which is also awesome. Relay is this Saturday, so I encourage the public, the board, everybody to definitely go out, at least for like an hour, and just see what Relay for Life is. It's amazing. Uh, we have class officer, class officer election, so that's always fun. Uh, we had Special Olympics two weeks ago, I think it was. I don't know if any of you guys got to come down and see it, but that was wonderful as well. And I know Josh's mom was there, so I'm sure she'll speak as well, but it was beautiful. We had uh, Jamie, who passed away in Exeter. We did a dollar fundraiser. Basically, we encouraged every person in the, I think it was just in the high school, to bring in a dollar, basically saying you could earn like $1,200 if everybody just brought in a dollar, and so that was really cool. And we also have Buddy Ball going on till I think June, and there's a ton of kids from all over the district, excuse me, but especially at the high school that helped out with that, so check that out if you're really not busy on a Sunday. Thank you, Ms. Sweet. Any comments or questions for Ms. Sweet? I'd like to have a comment about the prom, to which I went with my escort, Mr. Kurtz. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my first prom ever, for the record. <laughs> I'm glad it, it was, was memorable for you. <laughs> <laughs> looked dapper and everything, as did all of our students. I thought it was a first class uh, event, and I think our kids responded appropriately accordingly. Um, Mr. McKnight was very proud of them, and I can't tell you how I, I felt the same way. They danced nice, they spoke nice, they weren't carrying cameras and doing weird things with cameras. They were very sophisticated acting, and I, I'm just, I'm, I can't tell you how impressed I, I, I am with kids at that prom. I understand the food was age appropriate. I missed the food, but it had they had things that the kids liked and I got really good um, reviews from a few of the kids that I knew that way. So I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, Mrs. Halk and everyone else who um, coordinated that. That was spectacular. Thank you. Mrs. Bikes, you may not be aware, but I had emailed Mrs. Halk and asked her to set up the spotlight dance for you and Mr. Kurtz. She didn't get the email on top. Well, there was no disco ball anyway, so I would accept the invitation. Yeah, I had to decline because I couldn't think of anything more horrible than my, you know, my, uh, my, my parents showing up to my senior prom. So I wasn't going to wind up in the dog, daddy doghouse for months for showing up at my daughter's prom, so I decided to knock it up. Is there any public comment on the board member presentations? Seeing them, I'll move on to personnel, and, and Paul will say, is there any board member comments or questions about any of the personnel items? There was one, one question I had. It seemed just seemed a little unusual that there is a, a motion approved following leaves of um, in the classified Kimberly Barrett, and then on the reverse page, um, she resigns today. Okay. Does that sound a little bit? Okay. Right. Okay. It must have come out. No, it was from the 24th. Uh, yeah, she resigned. Yeah. Yeah. She took off time before she resigned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments or questions? I had a question about the resignation. Would that position be um, replaced or not be included in one of the cuts? We would need to replace them. The spe special Yes, yes. they need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Any public comment on personnel? Programs, uh, Mrs. Torsha, do you want to give them an enrollment report and student data report? Oh, they're attached. Um, I don't really have a report to give. No, I, I um, can do it if you don't want to. Uh, you have it? Yep, I have it. Um, enrollment right now, as of April 15th, 
was 3,508 students overall. This time last year it was sorry, yep, 100 less, um, uh, 100 more, I'm sorry. And um, with regards to our, there's not much change with regards to our out-of-district placements or you know our school tra transportation. So not much has really changed other than declining enrollment from last year to this year. Um, does this sound right to you, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Torture? The, the River Rock enrollment back in August was nine Danglin students with 23 enrolled, and now it's 16 and 48 enrolled. That does sound right, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they, River Rock has been very successful yes. in getting up and rolling here and, and yes. uh, enrolling students from all the different school districts. So it's been a success. Because yes. I think my recollection was when we were first negotiating the lease, Hitting up to 46 students was going to be hitting it out of the park. They're, they're, and so they're at 48 now. They're thrilled. They, yeah. they have um, gotten a big reception from the area school districts. Um, everyone is very happy with their program. And um, they're thrilled, too. They don't really want to grow that much larger because they don't want to lose sight of what they're doing for kids. Correct. So, okay. yes. Thank you. I just want to bring that to the attention of the board and the public. That well, that issue that we're getting five free placements, right? Even though there's 16 genuine students. There. Whatever the math was, I believe it was what, for every seven students? Up, up to 29, and then one for each eight thereafter. Correct. So I, I would five at 45. <laughs> I would have to agree with you that they, they have been following exactly the way that the How contract we is. How that as a business department? Like who is actually yeah. fully on yep. that? We should have five great places. Yep. Good. And then one other quick question. What's the high school dropout rate this year, please? I don't have that. Preston, do you know the... <laughs> we were at 17... 17 was the 13 to 14 number. And I did see that on the PDE website. I was wondering what the 14 to 15 dropout well, we'll have a 14 to 15 number until it's done, but at this current point, the number We wouldn't have a year to date number on that? We do, and, and it's around 7. I'll okay. double check the way you get the feedback. Thank you. Sure. I just, I actually just wanted to point out also the River Rock lease that that's 16 students that are not paying for transportation to go to another location. So the savings is considerable uh, for the school district. And the last time I did item under programs, we'll be voting to accept a $500 donation to BBC from the Berks Community Action Program. And when that's approved, I can say it now how much we appreciate that donation. Any public comment on programs? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to policy. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Martino, um, we actually had two meetings since our, we last met. Um, we met on April the 28th, uh, which was a busy work session because we forwarded uh, quite a few policies. Um, one was a consolidated district conflict of interest policy. Uh, that was, uh, we, we sent that to legal review. We just found out today, uh, Mrs. Torso uh, came back and said it's uh, ready for the full board review. First reading, uh, we'll see it next week. Um, very, another um, important project was the child abuse. Um, PSBA rewrote, rewrote our policy. Basically, our policy that we had was two paragraphs. It, was, it is what it is. It's pretty old, so it was way overdue for a review. That, too, went to uh, Fox Rothschild to be reviewed, and that will also be on next week's agenda. Uh, the most important thing is the suicide prevention um, awareness, uh, and suicide awareness and prevention. Uh, the Act 71 was passed last year. This year, the school district must be compliant with that. There is a training component to that. Mrs. Torsh may be aware of, I think, uh, um, that's something that she scheduled for the teachers in, in some kind of work session. Is that yes, Mr. Hurley will be working on getting that scheduled so that we're in compliance with that for the start of the school year. Thank you. Um, that, that also was written uh, by PSBA and it arrived for us. We, 
due to the importance of it, this must be enacted uh, before the beginning of the school year. So that was a very piece of business. Um, we didn't feel as a committee that we had much to say about it. Um, or we let it go through for legal review. That too has come back uh, for legal review, and that will be on the agenda for next week as well. Um, I do, Mrs. Torsha did give me um, a PowerPoint um, on the Act 71 and the components with that. I thought it was pretty, it's pretty important actually as far as it's one of our most important policies up next to uh, bullying and some of the other things because certainly, um, you know, the people that work with the students closer, including the students themselves, have a mechanism to report, their, you know, their concerns and have that acted upon. So um, the people, teachers mostly, and, and those that interact with the students the most, the administrators, of course, um, this will be very important to uh, uh, put forward. So uh, that's the, it's the law, so we had to comply with it. I think it's, it's great and that we have a policy that reflects uh, what the, the law actually requires us to do. Our uh, next meeting, May 28th. Our next meeting is actually, uh, we just decided today to meet again on the 28th here at 6 o'clock. Um, and then we will have our next meeting at the committee the whole of June uh, as our regular scheduled uh, meetings. We also, uh, I almost forgot, we, almost, we also discussed uh, fundraising. Mrs. Bites had some concerns about that. And we had uh, Ms. Reno here from the sports uh, Board side that answered a lot of questions. And, uh, uh, I think um, some of our concerns, and, and this is uh, Mrs. Weiss, I don't want to take all your thunder because I'm sure you're going to get the mic soon, um, <laughs> is that there, at the, um, there's a lot of fundraising that's going on in the district, and the feeling is a lot of the fundraising is to pay for things that, quite frankly, we, you know, should the district be paying for, such as baseballs, um, the, the starter the starter gun rounds, is that something that the track team should be fundraising to pay for that sort of thing? So, um, so those are some of the questions I want to talk to Mr. Basil about it. Um, what we would like to do is, and what we decide as a committee, is to wait until after the submission of all the team's uh, budgets. Uh, come August, and then review and see what see what they're actually paying for, and then ask the next question of why why would they be paying for that? Is, is that something that the district should be paying for, uh, or if that's something appropriate that the activity should be paying for? So we're not making any conclusions. We're just going to take that data, look at it, and, uh, and then bring it forward. And as far as the policy, I mean, uh, sorry, as, far, as far as finance, uh, that's something we ask the finance committee to look kind of going forward in the next year's budget. That concludes my report. If there are any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Board comments or questions? This is a bite. I think you summed it up quite nicely. <laughs> Thank you. Any public Sorry, comment? Like on, any public comment on policy? Seeing none, let me just back up a minute. Did Mr. McKnight? In regard to Mrs. Hicks' question, and I don't know which two positions she was is being that's being referred to in our budget, but you found 34 classes, if I remember, with less than 10 students. That's correct. I think that amounts to at least two teaching positions somewhere along the line. So, you know, I, I think that, that at least justifies the number of two. Moving on to transportation. Enrollment numbers, too. The fact that enrollment's been Well, no. We, enrollment in the high school has not declined yet. No, I mean, in the district at large, though. No, but the, it's two positions, positions in the high school. I, I, I agree. Okay. Mr. Basil, midday bus run transportation. Yes. Um, my schedule did not allow me to set something up for the early part of this month to get that done, so we're going to try to coordinate that with the Finance Committee. And get that all done in one shot. Okay. Is there any old business? I noticed um, absent from our agenda is the um, summer band program. I guess my question.
Washington was, or is it? Did we come to any agreement as to, is it, I mean, I agree it should either be a sanctioned district function, or a, a class, or it should be separated and, and run as a club uh, to allow the teachers to, to do this themselves. Um, I'm just wondering what happened to it, because I thought we, the discussion was going to be, you know, I know from what I heard, it was a, it's a positive, you know, we're in the black of this program, the district's making money, um, so that's the district's not for special funders. Well, all right, the special fund is, but it's, it's not the yeah. money. So my, that's my question is, where, what happened to it? Is, is there other discussion on that? I mean, the voting meeting is next week if, if we want to vote on it, but is there more discussion? The, the questions that I remember are that if we contract it out and, and make it an independent program, then what they charge and how much they make and all that is, is on whoever runs the program. If we keep it, then we need to determine what the costs and everything are. And should we not be making money on it? And as Mr. Dowsey just said, there's money made, but it doesn't come to us. So I, I think that needs to be discussed and finalized. I agree with you. It, it sort of got shoved aside, but uh, it's May, and I think we need to make a decision on it soon. I don't know what other discussion there is, though. I would say that I think we should um, contract it and have a competitive bid process, or at least solicit bids. Maybe we'll only get one, maybe, maybe we'll get more. Let's open it up to people to make it. I think you might be a little late, but... I was going to say, I mean, there's got to be a timeline here in terms of when they're going to they have to advertise for this program and put it out there and start collecting fees, and, and people need to schedule their summers around this thing. So, you know, obviously we need to make a decision at the voting meeting on it, for sure. Um, I, I don't think you can go out, I mean, that might be an idea for next year. I'm not sure logistically how feasible that is to go out and solicit music instructors to provide pricing for, I mean, I just don't know. Um, do you have a comment? I, 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 I thought of this as we were sitting here. Um, perhaps we can go through Blazer Foundation and they could potentially run it um, as a fundraiser. And because I know that, that was something that Stephanie has talked about in trying to do different types of programs throughout the summer that would draw our students in, give parents a place to have their students you know, go for a few days or a week, and then potentially maybe draw up some revenue for the Blazer Foundation so they could decide what type of a fee structure that they would like to set up and how they would like to reimburse those that um, provided the instruction. So perhaps we can explore that with the uh, Blazer Foundation. Well, I want to thank Mr. Wolf for, for reminding us because this was discussed a month and a half ago and we've stopped and we actually have at least three proposals now. One is to keep status quo, one is to go out for bids, one is to use the Blazer Foundation. And Mr. McKnight in his presentation a couple of months ago talked about running summer programs. Yeah, I'm going to throw so that in the mix too because that is well, I know Mr. McKnight, I think that's one of his agenda for next, next summer is to have a whole gamut of perhaps a program to raise money for the district. So that could be part of the... Yeah, I, I, think, I think what Mr. Basil suggested, I mean, we'll vote on it next week, but... It's probably, probably for this year, we're probably going to have to leave it as it is, probably. And moving forward to next year, look at these other ideas of, of what can be done and what will be done. I, I just have an idea with the Blazer Foundation idea going on with that. Um, if you do go to the Blazer Foundation or another community group, perhaps even current Daniel Boone High School students who are proficient at their instruments and recent Daniel Boone graduates could apply for this. In that case, maybe they can earn a little bit of money over the summer and you have, again, that continued connection to the school district. Um, just a thought. I really like that, that idea. Any other thoughts? We can get to get this up with the... Uh, our students have lost that Sure. Okay. Um, I think it's on there. Um, Mr. Kurtz, I know right now we do have programs where like the high school kids go down and teach during the summer and they bring back grads. It's all volunteer right now just to like turn a better profit and all. 
but that's definitely a good idea. Well, it's volunteer, it's volunteer for you guys, but some people are getting paid, and they do that yeah. money could go to the sewer guys, just as well. Okay, is there any public comment on summer band rumor? Why should I be my kids have been in the self-made program. Is this thing on? No, it's not on. Now it is. Now it's at uh, Top Suite, 1856 Old Suite Road. Uh, to send it out somewhere else, I don't like that idea as a parent because I know a lot of the things, when my littlest one went into sixth grade last year, the neat thing for her since, you know, I got MEC, BEC, AIC, it got with the school district instructors and they got together for the first time as their band It's going to be the sixth grade band. If you put the other ones out there, they're not going to have the same instructors, they're not going to have the school instructors. You know, it was one to build the rapport with the kids that don't get to see the other kids at the other schools. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Did you sign in? Oh, sorry. Moving well, we on to new business, uh, item A, it's, it'll be time to elect a, a board treasurer, so the board members uh, consider who so you'd like to nominate or nominating yourselves next week, and we'll vote on that. Um, the other items are, are yes, you can 10 percent. The other item is to approve a three-year agreement with Lightspeed Systems for the, the web content content filtering solution at a cost of seventy six hundred and seventy and seventy dollars, and. Two other items. One is a meet and greet discussion by Mrs. Bites. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Martina. Yes, I'm proposing that um, in an effort to foster um, better public participation than what we're restricted to in this format, that maybe some of the board members, if not all the board members, could agree to meeting. Um, maybe like 6.30, an hour before uh, a voting meeting, because they're the shorter meetings, and just make themselves, make ourselves available to the public to ask us, direct any comments, questions, suggestions at us, not restricted to, you know, the agenda items that they can comment on now. I would, um, we can make it more, less formal and, um, they could use the podium or not use the podium. We can mill around. We can maybe offer some coffee and pastries and make it, you know, palatable. And um, and us take notes on what our constituents are saying for change and for us to be, you know, attentive to what uh, their concerns are. Now, there would be some rules. I would suggest that they couldn't get personal. It would be, you know, big, big picture items and that, that any problem that they identified, I would kind of ask them to also have a solution to suggest. So uh, that's all I'm thinking of, like a meet and greet, um, maybe June, after the June meeting for an hour, for the board members who can get here an hour early, just make themselves available, set up a little, you know, reception, maybe meet and greet the, the board, your, your school board directors. The only question I would have would be for Mr. Subers. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's a good idea. My only question is if that's more of like a town hall forum, um, would we need to keep minutes because it, we officially have a forum? And um, how do you keep minutes in those types of discussions? But if you have multiple one-on-ones going on at the same time, I, maybe there's no need for that. I don't know. Yep. We can just ask him next week when he's here. Or we can reduce it to four members. Well, you typically have some type of committee meeting happening before. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We've mm -hmm. been utilizing committee meetings before our, our uh, voting and committee the whole to yeah. make the meeting nice a little more, more uh, so not a sweat meeting for us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one concern. But maybe, maybe, maybe something quarterly instead of, instead of monthly. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't suggest. Oh, okay. I was suggesting <laughs> annually. Annual. Oh, okay. All right. I was just suggesting one in June. Okay. Maybe something you could even do is uh, we have parent teacher conferences in one of the buildings. Parents are already in the district thinking school stuff. Have a room where there are some board members who will come and chat and offer ideas and solutions. Mr. Mads, sometime 
not the night, but sometime soon. Could you check Mr. Rathead's mic? It keeps cutting out. It could be the battery. It could be the mic. It could be Mr. Rathead. It could be, it could be the operator. You could error. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beagle, Gary Rue. Yes, this, um, this actually came up right after our last meeting. Um, the Board of Supervisors in Union Township had approached me and asked if I could bring this up with the board and perhaps with our uh, building principal at the high school. Uh, a lot of the residents along Gary Road um, have been complaining to the Board of Supervisors in Union Township about uh, vehicles that are speeding both to the school first thing in the morning, people running late, and then at the end of school, tearing out of there and, and racing down Gary Road. Um, the supervisors have installed a stop sign. Uh, that hasn't worked. They tend to just blow through the stop sign. Um, and apparently it's happening at very high rates of speed, you know, 65, 75, 80 miles an hour up and down that road. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a really, it's a residential road. It's on a hill. It's not the most safe road to use. So it, it, it applies both to students and parents, apparently. Um, yeah, the minivans running up there pretty quickly too. It's not just the kids in their cars. So I don't know whether there's something, you know, a morning discussion with seniors and juniors about driving responsibly and, you know, being good neighbors and, and that sort of thing. Maybe something the students can take care of as well with their peers. Uh, you may carry more weight than an adult lecturing students about the safety of driving. But it's something that the supervisors felt very strongly about and they wanted uh, some our assistance, whatever assistance we could provide. We can do uh, a couple things. You know, we do have uh, MEG and they, uh, in the morning and after school, they're doing some traffic right in front of the school. Um, I think that they have a look at the time they actually leave and have to check with uh, MEG. <coughs> Having someone down at that end, we can only control obviously our campus. And what goes up and down, Gary, uh, you know, would be. Place probably, I, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It would. Um, and we would be coordinating and have a conversation uh, with the state police and maybe be a little more uh, vigilant there. Um, I, I know that one of the original uh, calls I had received is that they wanted that area closed. Um, and I think that if we were to consider closing that end, we should certainly do the traffic study because what we do on 345 going down to 74. And there are a lot of young kids who live in those apartments. So yeah. I think before we consider closing, we could definitely take out maybe a study. To, to that situation, but I can't do the reason that would be for sure. I, think, yeah, I, mean, I think you just under, underscored their, their concern. I mean, it's gotten to the point where they're literally saying someone's going to get hurt on this road, and so we want to, we're thinking about closing it. They don't want to go that step. Um, so I don't know. I guess they were thinking some sort of morning conference, you know, grab the juniors and seniors and kind of bring them in and say, hey, look, guys, you know, this is serious. You got to slow down here, you know. And maybe just that conversation with the, with, the, with the kids and with the parents. I don't know if there's a newsletter that goes out or something else. It goes to the parents, too, to say, look, Connected. you guys have to slow down around here. We, we, we can do a public information campaign for sure, and, and we'll do that. Um, I think they tend to have a short life. Yeah. Um, I think having, like I said, M&G entrance down there will help also. Um, so I think all of the things should be done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the first talk should be a threat. But I think I think if someone gets caught speeding after your talk, they should lose their parking Spot, privileges. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Mr. Kurtz, you, you said you had some new business. Yeah. Oh, I you want to say something? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, Mr. McKnight has done a great job in the front putting the energy guys there, and I think if you put them in the back as well, it would definitely clean up because. I always take the front entrance out of school, and it was a mess until the security guards got more heavy there, and now it's a lot calmer, a lot smoother, a lot less bad stuff is happening. Even just to have one guy down there who just like parks his truck and is there for seniors and juniors to see who are speeding, it would clean it up so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of uh, the cooperation between the, the, I don't think we do enough between the, the, the district and our personalities, so. Uh, you know, if we can, Mr. Reline really can do something else that, that's, that's great. And, uh, I did, did have one question. Someone had mentioned that, you know, how you get stories from the past that never correlate uh, necessarily. But did, did you ever contract with Birdsboro for, for police services? Um, as far as I know, as far as I know, the state police still cover you in Township. Okay. 
So someone may be that that first row at one time. No, what they did do is in terms of they did coordinate their fire departments. Okay. So the fire departments have been consolidated between Union Township and Birth Row. Yeah, yeah that, that might be something that the union supervisors could look at, but maybe contract the state police for uh, a certain period. Uh, I'm sure you know, money talks, right? So maybe the state police could could be contracting a couple hours a year randomly to come down there and, and uh, enforce the limit, which I think would. Uh, if you know that someone is going to be there, uh, I think that would be a, be a good deterrent as well. Yeah, let's see. I think this, I don't think the state police really want to put themselves as, as being in a position of traffic cops. They got a lot of other things on their hands. Hey, they, they might. They might yeah. Um, <laughs> take long. Yeah, I mean, obviously we had an opportunity to ask the, the gentleman while he's here, but yeah. uh, we'll, I'll, I'll make that suggestion and see what they do. Thank you. Mr. Rathgab, I have been in touch with the state police when this first came up in or around um, December, and I had been working directly with Union Township, and that was how it was decided that they would put up the stop sign. So there's been efforts going on back and forth. It's just it's that daily presence on that road that is what's missing. And the state police, I do believe, came out a couple of times. Um, however often, I, I, I can't give you an exact number, but they're very aware as well, because I was calling everybody, um, including Birdsboro, to see if they couldn't handle you know, the lower end of it, and um, so, but I think that you know, Mr. McKnight's suggestion may help to deter. Mr. Kurtz? Yes, I just wanted to recognize the supervisors, Gobi and Weller, who are in attendance tonight for Happy Township. Uh, it's very nice to see you. You of us would like to have township meetings. It's nice to, uh, it's great to have you in attendance here. So thank you. Thank you. Any public comment on the new business or any issue? Very Kaplan, with uh, one of my four jobs that I have. This is that I have at Union Township is co chairman of the fire march. I found what times are you needing the state police there? I my understanding is that my understanding is that the students are coming through sometime between seven and seven thirty. So I I think roughly that half hour you know, before school, and probably more activity is closer to the 7.30 end where the speeding is taking place. And then at the end of the day, there's been different reports that have been given um, to us that kids are actually racing each other out of the, they're, you know, out of the lot. So I would say, what, 2.20, 2.25, um, to like 2.45 perhaps. Thank you. Tough love is the best. <laughs> One or two, one or two tickets. Stop. Now push the button once. There you go, it's on. Uh, my name is Richard Gokey. Uh, I'm a resident of Amity Township, one Clarego Drive. Uh, I'm also a supervisor in the township. And uh, thank you, Mr. Kurt. Thank you, Alex. Um, I want to start by, by just making this comment. I, I'm impressed how you all interact with each other. Like it, it, it's, it, did I pick a strange night, or do you normally do it this way? Uh, you, you, you all, the staff, the, the, the board, you, you all seem to work very well together. So congratulations. Thank you. And Mr. Gogi, it took a while, but the board has learned how to disagree with each other. Polite. It took a while. Yes. We can probably do that. Well, to start with, I want to thank the board for two things. One, providing a quality education for our kids. We all, we all know that's the most important thing. But secondly, uh, providing that education without raising your taxes. You've done that now for three years, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, it's very important for us several reasons. Uh, I know how difficult being a township supervisor, I know how difficult it is to provide quality services without raising taxes. Uh, we've managed in Amity Township to do that for 
up several years ourselves. Uh, it's a challenge. Uh, Amity Township is also very proactive in bringing in new business. Uh, we all know what that means. That's, that's a tax base. Uh, and it's a challenge to do that. And do you know one of the very first things they ask us, the developer, when they come into our township, they ask us what our local property taxes are. So it is extremely important to hold down the cost of business, of, of tax, from a tax standpoint. And I, I just want to thank you all for doing that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you.